Mm. But when we say sunshine, everybody knows who we mean by sunshine. Some call me Shenzhen, some some Churchill, maybe <laughs> Churchill. They did not call me. I could not remember a man when I arrived there. while they might not know even a few sentences in Arabic while they are Arabs. He said outside speak any language, but inside speak Arabic. An incident happened that changed your life dramatically. Yes. So they shot him and he fell next to my... At the age of 14 and someone is pointing a gun at your head. My mind to find a job as fast as possible and to depend on myself. You decided maybe you want to quit. The Oman is can't do the job. That's not true. 50 years of service. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to your show, Dome Podcast. With me, your host, Hatem al Salam. Today is a very inspiring story. A journey of success. And today, my honorable guest is going to be Engineer Mohammed bin Salim Al Hinai. Assalamu alaikum, Engineer Mohammed. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you today? Fine, thank you. I'm honored and very happy to have you on the show, and thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Thank you very much, and you are most welcome. Uh, Engineer Mohammed, uh, your story is very inspiring. It started a long time ago. Yes. And uh, uh, before I get into your story, I visited you uh, almost. Uh, two months ago in your farm in uh, in uh, Behla and I saw you have uh, products, date, date products, yes. alhamdulillah. And I saw that you have a very special packaging yes. and on the packaging it is written or mentioned sunshine dates. Yes. Tell me where did this name come from because most of the people when we say engineer Muhammad they might not know who it is. Mm. But when we say sunshine, everybody knows who we mean by sunshine. This name came to me by coincidence on 18th of February 1968. I was working in one of the drilling rigs yes. on the catering side. Company called Spin is the catering company. Yes. Uh, and I was serving meal or sometimes taking meal to the rig side. Okay, by, by car via Land Rover to the rig side for the employees. Yes. May, mainly for the senior staff because they are doing 12 hours shift while our Omani crew at that time they are doing 8 hours shift. Okay? Yes. So I used to carry food for them. And this, this tool busher who was in charge of drilling operation on the rig side, one day he came from uh, shift. I mean, he is only working daylight supposed to be unless there is emergency. Yes. So he saw me. I was wearing white, my teeth white, no hair, nothing. Okay? So he saw me. I'm the only one smiling among them. Yes. They are all about two meter long, uh, tall, and uh, he said, oh, you are my sunshine. He was singing, I think after having English coffee at that time, Yes. and he was singing, you are my sunshine, my sunshine. So I was asking my colleague there, is he swearing at me? He said, no, sunshine, it means good, not bad, you are shining. He said, he saw you are smiling. And your teeth are outside. And so, it he seems call, so he called you sunshine. Sunshine for that purpose. Yes. Nothing else except for that purpose. Anyway, it stuck on me that name. Because the man who gave it to me, he's the highest position person on, the, on that camp. Camp consists of about 100 people. So you, you, you got the name from the boss and yes, it, it and stuck it, with you. It stuck with me. Yes. So now everybody in your neighborhood, your colleagues, uh, yes. your previous colleagues. Not only that, most of the people, it was not easy for them to pronounce it properly. So how, how, how do they call you now? Somebody call, uh, some call me Shenzhen, some some Churchill, maybe <laughs> Churchill, they did not call me. But I accept anything as long as I know their meaning, uh, their, 
they are referring to me. I I uh, I am very the very The name is just a mark. I I am very inspired uh, with the the story uh and I started with the story uh to show uh, why you got the name because of your attitude mm. in in that place but I'm not going to spoil the surprise and tell everybody where you were working and what happened. I'm going to take you step by step and uh I want to take you um to 1951. where you were born in Oman and then seven months later you traveled to Africa with your parents. Uh, why did you go to Africa, uh, engineer Mohammed? Why or when? Why? Why? Why why did your family decide to move to to Africa? At well, at those days yes. there was m- not much here to to have and to get busy with. There are no jobs in the country. life was a little bit difficult not little it's more uh, very difficult yes okay and many omanis used to travel either to saudi or middle east or east africa yes that's two places mm. so they go to east africa they have independence of doing private jobs like shops and trading and everything and oman is well known in the past before our uh, our time they have been going to up to china they spread the for, for trade for and trade business and everything yes oman is very much like yemenis they travel all over the world yes like recently i was in indonesia and i was told 11 minister in indonesian government originally yemenis mashallah they can't even speak arabic anymore but yeah. they are originally yemeni Gener- a generation from after generation yes, yes. they are about 500 years they were there mashallah similarly oman they have been in east africa much long ago yes. so we went my parents my my father initially he went to africa 1947 1947 yes so he went before you he were born he went before i'm born and before yes. he married my mother yeah and he stayed there for three years he came back to oman he got married he got married to my mother yes and then he was one year extra here until he got the first daughter and then second one it was me the first daughter died before we left to africa yes and then we left from oman where is it's a eid praying place in bahla now yes at the entrance of jabrin yes. gima it's called and and uh, and and how d- how did you travel to africa by by w- sea i will come to you yes we gathered there people from misia people from rafat it was my father yes people from misia cousins of my mother yes and some people from wadi krayat so they gathered there eid eid msall al eid in uh, bahla yes just at the junction of jabrin now Okay. Okay. And they met there all the people with the camels and we had to make a journey from there all the way up to Barka Abu Abali. We'll we'll get into a dow link. Yes. Okay, to go to Africa. So we went on 22nd of 22nd of Safar 9 13 uh, 70. 1370 Hijri. Hijri, yes. yes. Okay. And it took the journey from here, uh, from there, from Bahla Junction, Jabrin Junction, up to Bissia, up to, uh, sorry, Bu'abali, Barka. Okay. Yes. It took around 22 days Mashallah. by camels. Yes. Of course, they have to stop in between, feed the camel, have a rest, and then start the journey from next day again. And of course at that time you were an, in, was an ar- infant around infant 9 yeah. month old 9 month old yes with uh, with that journey 2 month I was I um, mean 22 days I reached Barka almost 9 month age mashallah okay Masha and then we got into the dow we went to Zanzibar we had to pass through Salala Somalia and Kenya and all over the places we reached Oma, uh, Zanzibar after 73 days in the sea in yes. the sea because at that time when we came back it took us only 18 days but while going 
uh, while going, it took us 73 days. Because only we rely on the wind blow. Yeah, so you didn't have the, the engines in the ships. There in is the, no in engine, but when we came back after 14 years, yes. we had engine already. Mm. So when the wind is against us, you can use the engines. We can use the engine. But while going, we didn't have. Yeah. We so, uh, Engineer Mohammed, your first memories as a child was in Africa. In Africa, yes. But uh, can you describe to us how was life in Africa at that time? You grew up, you went to school, and uh, uh, the environment overall in Africa. The environment of Africa was good. I mean, not that I can compare it with Oman. Because I could not remember Oman when I arrived there. I was still maybe one year plus. Yeah. So I, I only remember when I was around three years old. It was uh, cooler, uh, cool, but I, no comparison. Because I don't have a reference to compare. Only yes. my, my parents' father and mother remember Oman, how it was. But you, your parents uh, talked about Oman, they talked about... Yes, yes. Uh, you, I mean, you, you continued my the, father the heritage. He, he was he was in Yazir al Khadra, Pemba. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The the green island of Zanzibar. It's called Pemba in Swahili. Yes. And he stayed there for about two years before 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 I was before this second trip, the previous trip. He spent around three years there. As I said, 1947, he went there. And then I grew up there. I remember we moved to two houses. Then my father started buying, renting this uh, crumpled clothes. Yes. And uh, accumulating it and picking it up, hiring people to pick it up and drying it up on the mats until it's dry. And then he sell as a big bulk, number of sacks. So that was the business uh, the your business, father was into? Yes. And he had a small shop at the house, near the house. But then he was uh, doing uh, wholesale, he, buying the uh, coconut from people, renting the tree for that season, uh, close tree, and then accumulating about, say, 100 or 200 sacks of, uh, of uh, cloves, dry cloves, yes. best quality, and selling them to uh, big traders. And also doing with the coconut, buying coconut from other people, breaking it apart, drying it, uh, put it in an oven to dry it up, yes. and then sell it as a bulk. Now, um, Engineer Muhammad, uh, your memories of school. I, of course, you went to the local schools, and it was in the Swahili language, right? So you, you did not speak any Arabic at that time? when you were in school, like with your parents? No, talking about the school, it's a different story. As, a, as I mentioned to you, I was born in Oman. Yes. I reached there still around one year old. Okay? Yes. Then when I start speaking, I remember slowly I grew with Swahili speaking. But my father, when I was age of six, he said, Muhammad, if I hear you speaking Swahili from the from the Dahris or inside towards the house, yes. I will give you your teeth and your hand. <laughs> Mashallah. I said, why? He said, no. I don't want you later on to find a translator to translate from uh, to you to Arabic. It, which was a wise thing to do, yes, I think, uh, I for you to hold on to the language. Yeah. So he said, if you ever speak Inside the house, one word of Swahili, I will give you your teeth. That means he will beat me on my teeth and they will come out. Subhanallah. So I said, why? He said, just I'm telling you that. Speak Arabic. Even when you speak to your mother, oh, you want to speak to me, speak Arabic. So I had no choice except to speak Arabic. He said, outside speak any language, but inside speak Arabic. Make sure when I'm not there, you don't need translator. Now this is... Uh a very good lesson, uh, Engineer Muhammad, for the parents in this generation. Most of the parents, they are proud yes. of their children speaking English. Yes. Uh, while they might not know even a few sentences in Arabic, while they are Arabs. 
What would you like to tell them, uh, Engineer Mohammed? I like to tell them to listen to this, and it's a good example. Because I came Oman, now I learn another five languages, Mashallah. but without without missing my original language, yeah. official language Arabic. Which is your identity. Yes, that's my identity. So when I came back to Oman, I didn't have any problem. It was like I never, I don't, I don't speak other Swahili. Hmm. You cannot differentiate that I speak Swahili, unless you are told I'm speaking Swahili. Yes. I was also surprised uh, when I spoke to you the first time mm. and you told me that you know the uh, Swahili language. Mm. Uh, I, I never knew that you went to Africa. I never knew that uh, you lived no, there. No, I went and I stayed 14 years in Africa. MashaAllah. Now, um, Engineer Mohammed, in 1964, an incident happened that changed your life yes. dramatically. Yes. What happened? What happened is... Uh, Omanis, they were majority, and uh, in Zanzibar, in Zanzibar, not majority as a total of people, but it was, they were having the more hands-on Zanzibar. Yes. And the ruler, of course, the cousin, one of the cousins of His Majesty the Sultan. Yes. At that time was Said Jamshid, who has come back to Oman. Yes. But before that, I remember Said Khalifa. Yes. Bin Harb, uh, and then his son Abdullah, who did not last for long, he was not he was sick. Then uh, Sultan, 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 Sultan Jamshid, Jamshid took, over. took over. So there was also British uh, consult there, consult, and Omanis after. Oman is who called the English to be there as a support. Yes. Because the, the Omanis left from Oman and fought with the Portuguese. Yes. So the government of Tanz Africa those days, they came and asked for help from Omanis to help them because the Omanis, before that, they overthrown the Portuguese and they overthrew them from India also. They took support from Omanis. Yes. So Tanzania, uh, Zanzibar said, okay, we'll do the same. We'll uh, go and request Omanis. So they request, and Omani went and helped them. And then they liked the place. They wanted to stay longer, and they stayed longer. And uh, when they wanted just to independent, so they were told, okay, you have to do voting. Who win the vote will give him the, to, will hand over Zanzibar to him. But I tell you what happened. Then they did the first vote, I remember, and second vote. Yes. And third vote, we won with majority seats. So Oman was given, and the ruling was given back to Oman. Oman. So they hire, they had the prime minister, and they have all the ministry. But unfortunately, they did not change much in the army. The army, they left it as it is. So... It was the same majority, and majority in the army were Swahili. Yes. So their politics went on, and they went to Kenya, and they told their colleagues, go ahead, come on, go if you rescue your, uh, Zanzibari, your Zanzibar country. Okay? And they came from Kenya. Majority who invaded Zanzibar from Kenya. Okay? Yes. Although Kenya and Mombasa and, and Zanzibar... And Tanzania, at one time, it was ruled all majority. Because Sheikh Mbarak bin Ali... Al it was Hina, ruled by Oman, you mean? Yes, by Oman. Yeah, the, the coastal the, part of it. Yeah. Yes, the coastal yes. part of it. But anyway, they came and helped. And then they started shooting everywhere. And we were told on the radio, when, they, when, the, when the army comes to your place, just surrender and you'll be taken to the city, and then for some time, then you'll be sent back home. Okay. So when they came, surrounded our house, they said, Salem, come out. Salem, which is your father? My father. Yes. So he came out and was there with my nine family members, plus my uncle and his wife and two children. Yes. And my father, myself, and two wives for my father, and we are nine children. So, the, 
while they were telling my father, raise up your hand. So I think he touched, he touched his belt. So they thought maybe he want to pull a pistol or something. So they said, give him the chuma. Give him at local hadith. Give him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Yes. Okay. So I could see they are picking the bullet one by one. They're inserting it on the gun, on the rifle. So they shot him and he fall next to my back. I was... Next to him? Next to him. How old were you at that time? 14 years. 14 years. Yes. yes. Because that was happened in 1384. 1384 Hijri. 1384 Hijri. And we left here 1370. So that is exactly 14 years. Subhanallah. So he fall and he left here yeah, and say, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi Sa'ad. He fall and, and I saw my mother, my, my stepmother, went to cry on him. I pulled them one by one because they were ready to shoot them. So I had to cry and pull them, pull them apart until we said, let us go, otherwise they will shoot us all. Yes. So then we walk about 500 meters to a place where they will pass the, the bed fort will carry the, with the army. And they came and they stopped at that parking place, stand Texas station, and they put the end of the gun into here between our... On you? Or on me and all my sister, my brother, and my mother, and my stepmother. On all of us. What was going through your mind at that time, at the age of 14, and someone is pointing a gun at your head? I couldn't say anything except la hawla la quwla billah al azim Subhanallah. Surrender to God and uh, hoping for the best. And God, uh, God protected us from them. So then one guy came, he said, no, they did not do any problem, and their fa parents and their father being shot. So they pulled the gun away. They put us in the bed fort. We had to go to Rahaleo, they call it. It's a school in one area called Rahaleo. 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 So we were kept there for seven days. We have to queue for a glass of water, maybe five hours, six hours. To get a glass to of water. To get a cup of water to, uh, to give my, my family, either what? my mother or my sisters. In Engineer Muhammad. Did you manage to bury your father and uncle? No, no. So you don't know no, what happened to them? No, I went there after two months. Yes. And I found they, surround, and they brought uh, soil and they put a dome of soil. So, dome of soil. So they did not dig a grave, no, they just no. covered him with sand? Yes, yes. They brought all the loose leaves of the coconut trees and put it and brought some soil and kept it on top. And at the age of 14, I could not handle that. And also, the, 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 the painful to see him shot. The, yes. Shot and killed. Uh, Engineer Muhammad, uh, we will continue what happened after that, after this short break. Okay. So stay tuned, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Dome Podcast with me, Hatim Al Absalam, and we're back with our guest, Engineer Muhammad bin Salim Al Hinayi. How are you, Engineer Muhammad? Fine, thank you. The first part of the the discussion, we spoke about your childhood, and there was a dramatic dramatic change in your life where your your father and uncle was shot in front of you, which made you to take a, a very important decision the decision of leaving Zanzibar and coming back to your country, Oman. Mm -hmm. What happened, uh, Engineer Muhammad? Well, after staying seven days in that uh, campus of school, yes. in Rahaleo, it's called, we had, uh, we had to make a decision. So everybody was uh, told, if you want to go back to Oman, you have to go and register for traveling by Red Cross. Yes. And the DAO or the lunch will leave in two months' time. So we had to hurry up, but we didn't have passport, we didn't have anything. Who, so who made the decision for you to leave? Was in it my you case, or? It was between me and my mother. Yes. 
where the two who discuss because the other ones are very small. Yes. Okay. I had at that time four sisters from same mother and two brothers. Yes. Six and my mother seven and I'm eight. We are all nine together. Plus one she died. Yes. Okay. So and she said we don't have we don't have a place to stay here anymore. We have to go back because my my brothers are alive in Oman. Whoever is alive will go back. Your your uncles in Oman. My uncles Khwali. No. And brother of my father. No. One of them was still alive at that time and we had to come back. So we got into the Dao on first Hajj, first day of the Hajj of that year. Dhul Hijjah. Dhul Hijjah, 1384. 1384. Yes, 1384. So we got into it. And on 10th, the day of the Eid, I remember they made this tambi. Uh, Swear we Yes, yes. It's, a, it's, a, a, it's a kind of a dish, a money yes, dish. Yes, yes, yes. It's semolina or something that they call it. It's like noodles but sweet. Yes, but loved. Yes. So we left from there that day of the Eid and we came all the way to Oman. We arrived in Oman just one day before the last day of the Hijjah yes. on 28. And on 29, they arranged bed for us from the army. We, we landed near Masjid al Khor. Be- before before telling me about landing in in, in Oman, yes, uh, I want to know what were you thinking at that time, uh, Engineer Muhammad? You are a fourteen year old boy, mm. and you're going to your original country, mm. which you have never seen. Yes, you don't know anything about it, and it's very very different than Zanzibar. Very so, what was going through your mind? What were you expecting to see in Oman? Everything to me was new, mm. completely different life, different different way, different climate, different scenery. Everything is different. It's completely big shock. But still, when I compare it, it was better than where I come from, yes. because there I saw losing my father and my parents yes. in front of my eyes, and I saw the people got killed in front of me, thousands of thousands of people. Some people, they throw them from the bed fort into the tip of the guns and they shoot them. So, so what I saw, I don't want to recall it, to see it. I wish I don't see it in the rest of my life, inshallah. So despite the difficulty in Oman, the weather, the, the place, it's, it's very different than Zanzibar. Mm. Yes. You, rather, you would rather be in Oman yes. than to be in, yes. in, in Zanzibar. Now tell us, when you arrived, what? What was the first thing that we arrived? Your as I said, we landed near Masjid Al Khor from yes. that boat uh, in Muscat. Yes. Near the, the next port. to Beit Al Alam, Qasr Al Alam. Yes. Okay. And there was Masjid Al Khor under this uh, near fort. opposite to Jalali. Fort. Po- fort, yes. Yes. So we landed there and then they kept us in Safar Khana. What is Musafar Khan? Musafar Khan is belong to the ministry. Okay. It's like a guest 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 house. It's guest like a house, guest house for a visitor from interior. Yes. Next to this Darwaza Sagira Man Muscat Thania. Mushlaulia. Not the first gate entrance to the Muscat. The second gate. Second gate. Yes. Okay. So we it was kept that as a guest house for us, people who came from Africa. We landed. Unfortunately, those days, every day you hear fire get erupted. Why? Why? why do I you don't know. It was sprayed by plane, some powder, and you get fire. This is 1964, around 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 April. Can you describe uh, the the overall look of Muscat at that time? Did you have roads? Did you have shops, uh, houses? The total roads available in Oman at that time, not more than five kilometers. Five kilometers of road yes. only? Yes. The road from Matrah, opposite to this uh, where the 
ra, ra, what a day roundabout yes in front of Nahda hospital yes from the head start and there is a gate there if you come after six o'clock it's difficult to pass by until tomorrow morning the gate is closed gate is closed also if you brought something from interior you have to l- pay tax for it because mm. you are entering like you are entering different country mm. the way it was set up the rule for those days you brought some semen oil ghee you enter there you have to pay tax now uh, engineer mohammed and then you moved to bahla did you go to your relatives or yes, did yes. you stay in muscat no no i stayed in muscat only two days two days and then you moved to and in muscat don't try to walk without shoe uh, even slipper and i didn't have even slipper so the first day my feet was burning i could not learn a walk on the ground you you're used to the 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 rainy uh, weather yes, in, in course, zanzibar so you uh, can walk without that. shoes this is was all rock and just opposite msafar khan there is small pavement of uh, black top in, engineer mohammed black, uh, black top is hot and the g- soil is hot hotter I, engineer mohammed you experience the true sunshine yes. in muscat yes the real sunshine the real sunshine they put us on a bed fort next day yes and they said this bed fort will carry people to adam adam al habbi manah bisya ma'mur bahla and abdul hamra so we got in maybe about 70 people in the in the in the car fort, yes we got in but make sure it doesn't take your touch your body the bed fort Because, because it's it, all made out of steel all made of steel and we got into there and when you come to Nagd al-Mubariya people have to run and put big stone under the wheel uh, under the tire otherwise if they don't change the gear in right time it will come back all the way to ground subhanallah yes subhanallah. because it's a, it's a, it's a hill uh, high step high step yes inclination okay. now it's I, mawad mahram now Uh, engineer Muhammad I want to fast forward until the time where you have already settled and now you being the elder son uh, and the only uh, male in the family yes you have to seek a living for your family hmm. you are almost uh, 17 at that time right and uh, not yet 17 not yet 17 yeah, yeah. so you decided to go and look for a for for a, for I a job right there after we arrive of course my uncles the brothers of my mother yes. we had to check how many of them left at that time there were three left still we sat with them and then my uncles from father side from my father side brother of my father they came after two weeks to this year they heard that because no telephone no means of communication yes unless you send barwa a letter message. yes a message so and so and they heard about it they had we are there we, they came they hire a car okay to take us to them we said okay so we went there to afat from bisia yes in bisia we stayed about two weeks and after two weeks they took us we arrived in afat we lived with them in the same house of course the houses are very really small I mean like this room is half size of a house subhanallah I mean the accommodation was very small and we felt after staying one week he said can you find us a place to live with getting better exposure bigger size they said okay so we found one old house was left behind my father had a one room left behind him in Oman same as this size but it was all no roof broken down Mm. So before he went to Africa he had yeah, uh, yes he had yes. Mm. okay but it's not useful for to somebody to stay in it i gave it to my uncle the the last uncle of my father brother of my father i gave it to him and i think he sold it for 7 qarsh how, how much is 7 qarsh 7 qarsh 3 and 1/2 real 3 and 1/2 reals yes after i left i said ami if you want it because i don't think i will come here I will go and find better way. Yes. Anyway, I went uh, we went there and stayed and they called us. They heard because they all looking 
يعني ان الغافه ذا فيو واتر ويلز وي ذا بلانت ويت بيج ويت اند ات واز هارفستنج سمر از ا هارفستنج تايم اتس هوت اند يو ار جوينج تو ورك ات هوت بليس اكسبوز تو ذا هيت دايركتلي ذا سان نو شيد ات اول ذا شيد اونلي نيكست تو يو از ذا ويت يس ذيس هايت So this height of this uh, wheat. So I said, we want you all. I said, how many of us? Say all of you. One guy who was a sponsor of looking after that wheat, that water well. The water well belongs to Sheikh Abd- Abdullah bin Zahar al Hinayn. Yes. He said, last, they said, Muhammad, and they spoken to my mother, that person who is there we knew him before going zanzibar my mother at least knew him he was a good friend of my father he said come you will work for me the one month i said what you have to do he said you have to cut the wheat cut the wheat hmm. and then you have to accumulate it and then start beating it i don't know whether you have seen uh, the, the video. that's how you remove the wheat from yeah, the, from yes. the leaves yes Sumbula had you beat those ones yes and then you start beating it it comes out of that sumbula yes and then you start blowing the w- let it blow the wind so the 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 ashes ashes will go away yes. and you remain with the wheat yes but it's all on the sun yes only you cannot work before 10 o'clock you start working one or two o'clock up to six o'clock and I was accumulating this wheat picking we one by one the wheat you know just imagine like this one will be 1000 wheat so i have to pick after one by the, one after working hours after six o'clock i have to pick either bringing one dates and do like this and pick them so we can make our bread out of it tomorrow i have to feed my family my mother she's doing her maximum best now how long did you continue doing this before you moved this on is until the wheat all was packed and put in gunia and they start sell they give us 5% no i mean uh, how long uh, the period this is doing only this season, job only the season okay one or two months maximum and then you decided to move to something else then i decided i decided to go with sheikh mohammed bin zahar hinay to muscat yes and to ask him to speak to Aulad Muhammad bin Amir al-Hinay. Yes. Because they knew my father very closely. And my father used to visit them. In 1947, when he went to Zanzibar, he worked for them in Jazeera. Yes. Okay. So he went with Sheikh Muhammad bin Zahri. He was giving a wilayat of Samail to look after. Yes. After Ja'lan, this is 19 against 64. So he went to Samail. He left all his belongings and all items which he needed to carry with him from one wilaya to other wilaya into Bedford. And I got into that Bedford and we came together. And he said, I'm invited by Muhammad bin Amir to have lunch on so and so day. And at the same time, I have a way, a reason to go because I've been called by Sayyid Ahmed Ibrahim to be handed over to uh, Samail wilaya. Betel Barza. Yes. Okay. So I said, may I join you? He said, okay. So we got into that Bedford. We came to here. Uh, take care, take care. Before you go to Miabin. Yeah. Okay. So he brought me with him. He spoke to Sheikh Mohammed Bamir on the message I want to speak to. Why Why did I want uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zahar? I want him to tell Mohammed bin Amir to be kind to me, to give me the remaining 8,000 shilling. My father kept 9,000. 1,000 he gave it to us when that day, first day of the Eid al-Hajj, yes. coming to Oman, he sent us 1,000 shilling, which now 5,000 shilling, one real. Just imagine. Mashallah. And the total wealth left by my father, 8,000. 8,000 8, 9, shillings. 9,000, 1,000 we took it with us. Uh, both of them, the 9,000, equivalent to maybe one and a half real. So that is what I inherited from my father. So for me and for all of us. So my father, because he married two wives, so from the other wife, I got a sister. Okay? Yes. And they have to calculate how much for my sister and for my stepmother. 
and was left and I was left with around 3,500 shilling, about 400 beza maybe. Today, when you convert them today, Mashallah. that's what my wealth from my father. After that, they requested Sayyid Ahmed Ibrahim. They said we have this Muhammad bin Salim. His father was our friend, and he was his father was killed, and now he's yatim, and he cannot work in Oman because of his age, and we cannot give him a job in the shop because the people will blame us later on. Why did you give this yatim? You should have taken him to school. So that's why they told me Nasr Muhammad bin Amir. And they were maybe right. But what is in my mind is different than what is in their mind. What was in your mind? My mind to find a job as fast as possible and to depend on myself. I don't want to rely on somebody just on the mercy of people. I want to stand on my feet. So how, was, how are you planning to, to, to find a job? Was planning, I say, man, get the work to head, work it. No. So I was planning. God will open ways for me. I have to only st strive, uh, uh, strive, yes. strive, strive for the best. So what I did. So they kept they call and uh, speak, spoken to Sayyid Ahmed bin Ibrahim. He was the representing the Sultan in Oman. Yes. Okay. Sultan uh, Sayyid bin Timur. He's in Salada, and no, not easy to see. Not everybody can see him. Only the high people in the uh, country, like uh, Sheikh Sultan bin Saif al Hosni, Ali bin Hilal Mahmoudi, and uh, Mashaykh al Hawasna, they can see him. And Sheikh Ahmed Muhammad al Amir, Ahmed Muhammad al Harthi. Otherwise, people like me, you can forget to see him. And anyway, I saw Sayyid Ahmed Ibrahim three times, and I asked him. Sayyid Ahmed Ibrahim, are you zidu neratib? Increase my increase my, my, increase my, my salary. Yes. They gave me 40 rupees, 4 real a month. When they say, okay, you can study in Masjid al Khor. And the lecture there was Sheikh Ahmed, uh, Ahmed al Khalili, plus one guy called Sheikh Rabi' bil Mur. Yes. Mazru'i, blind person. Yes. Okay. So I waited for about two and a half years. Every time I go and request, they said, well, do you know, you have to pay money. Now, thank God that you are getting money. I said, yes, Sayyidi, you are absolutely right. But my situation is different. I cannot run my life with 40 rupees for a year. It's not enough to buy medicine for them. They're all sick after coming back. Kalia tried to handle it as much as I said, never mind. From there, I had to look for a way to go to Fahud. How to go to Fahud? Then we, I got lifted by somebody who was going Ibri, so I took a lift. And from Ibri, then I found a way to go to Fahud. I went Fahud, as I mentioned to you previously, and I sat looking for a job. I met this Mr. Ahmed bin Said bin Nasr al Hadrami. I went forward, I met this Ahmed Said. So I told him, excuse me, may I speak to you? He said, yes. So I spoke to him, I, I told him my situation. He really sympathized with my situation. He said, okay, I don't have any job and I'm not in charge of recruitment. Not much I can do, only I can do one thing. I will ask Mr. Mubarak, he is a rig administrator to speak to to see his whether we need an employee, whether in getting, I say, anywhere I'll work, I'll do any job. You just offer me a job. If it, anything you want me to do, I will do. Yes. As long as I can earn money to feed my family and buy bread for myself. He said, okay. So he's spoken to this uh, guy and then he's spoken to a sheik because you can't work unless with the permission of a sheikh. So he spoke to him, he said this yatim and so and so and so and so. He said, okay, so he, they gave me a letter from both of them. I took it to the HR manager there in Fahud, one Englishman, his name McLaughlin. So I saw him, I gave him the letter. He read Arabic, 
because those days when they come, they send them for a course to Lebanon. Ah, so they can they can speak Arabic. They can speak Arabic. Yes. So he read the letter in Arabic, and he told me, Muhammad, for time being we don't have a job here in Fahud, and from today onward, if there is a job, we'll come and call you. We'll send you a vehicle to pick you from Bissia. But from now onward, I don't want to see you in the camp as a freeloader. Mm. I mean, uh, casuals. No. Because you may get caught by electricity or trapped into sewage or anywhere. It's, a, it's a restricted area. Restricted it's a area. dangerous uh, yes. place. So he said, please find your way to go back to Bissia. I said, okay. So now I had to double job from now onward. To watch him, that I don't meet him. And second thing, to look for a job. I mean, when I... So you decided not to go back to this no, year? No, You decided to stay. You were yes. determined to get a job. So one guy, he doesn't speak English except maybe four words. He told me, when you find Mas'ul uh, in charge, tell him, please, boss, I want to work. And if he asks you to speak English, tell him, just little. Hmm. But anything after just little, I don't know. Yes. So I remember these stories that make me laugh now when I'm alone. I remember one Dutchman came to Rig 4 and he said, Hi, and say Hi. You speak English? He said, No. And then I realized, Oh, Muhammad, you missed the opportunity. Yes. Oh, I was shouting at him. Yes, what happened? I mean, that, I think that's what he said. I said, Just little. And then he started giving me a name. Just little. When he see me again, he just calls you just little. I know nothing except that just little. Yes. So I laugh at it. I was told to say just little. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't say no. Say just little. Anyway, then they gave me uh, that bar gave me a letter to somebody rig administrator or another rig for. So I took that letter with me. I went and he told me, okay, let me think. He thought about it and he said. At that time, it was around January. He said, can you come 14th next month, 14th of February? I said, OK. So I went to repair my house because it was made of clay and it was leaking all over. So you went back to Bissia? Bissia, yes. yes. I found somebody going, and I took a lift. I went with them, OK? And I repaired the house. repaired the house, the leak, clay, mixed the clay with some of this of the wheat and then took it and plastered it on the top. Somebody is giving me, my mother was giving me some of the clay and I'm on the top. So sealed the holes for a while and came down. And after one month, I went back to Fahud. We, we, will, we will continue the story of going back to Fahud, inshallah, okay. after a short break. Okay, fine. thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to Dome Podcast with our honorable guest, Engineer Mohammed bin Salim Al Hinai. Welcome back, Engineer Mohammed. You're welcome. Now, the time has come for you to go back to Fahud yes. because you were promised a job. Yes. So, what happened uh, when you were back to Fahud? When I went back to Fahud, okay, on 14th February 1968, I was offered the job as a uh, is washing dishes. Yes. And sometime I take over as a serving meal. I said, okay. I started with a schedule of 42 days and 116 rupees salary. How much is 116 in equivalent to? At that time, around 11.6 real per month. Mashallah. Working 42 days and going six days off. Subhanallah. Eight hours a day. And staying in a tent and getting kerosene to make up my own uh, coffee and tea. How were you traveling from Fahud to Bissia? Well, there is a bed for it. Every 42 days it takes us to rest days and bring us every six, uh, after six days. And that bed for it, it will take people from Adam Manah, Nizwa, Farq, Bahala, Bissia, Ma'amur, and Al-Habbi. And we'll come back to Fahud. How long does it take, the journey? 
to Fahud? Almost 48 hours. 48 hours. At present, it takes one and a half hours. Subhanallah. At that time, with the bed for around 70 people in it, we have to drop. No, ro no roads, only tracks. Yes. You have to make your own track. Mm. And uh, so when you started the, the job the first time, what were you thinking? You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure as a young man, you have ambitions, you have dreams, you want to start your own life maybe, get married. So maybe it was very difficult for you. Were there moments where you decided maybe you want to quit or you're not going to continue? No, it's I very never difficult. had that. I had all kind of moments, but never had a moment of quitting unless I go for a better one. Yes. But losing the job completely, I never had that. It never came to my mind. All what I had in my mind to start studying every day with 10 words and try them and call them 10 bullets. You, you, you mean uh, studying the English language? English language, yes. yes. So I pick from you one word, good morning. What is good morning? Sabah al khair. Hmm. So I write in front of it in Arabic, Sabah al khair. Then a word of English, come, go until I joined PDO. This is, I picked my English first two years before joining PDO. From the people you're working with? Yes, from the people surrounding me. Yes. Even when I serve the meal, he say, come. He say, what it means, come? He say, no, ta'ad. So, in the mess also. And then what happened? I decided after joining two years, and after two years, I said, I need another job. How do you, what, what do, you are not educated, it's an woman. You examine me, what job you want? I want to mat tester, to uh, take M the mud tester. Mud tester, mm. to take the mud weight because the rig is drilling with mud, mm. to cool the bit and to bring the samples to surface. Yes. So you, you inject mud into the pipes, Yes. and it comes from the nose of the bit, and it brings up all the mud and the cuttings, pieces of stones and mud and clay to surface. And you need somebody to make sure to check the weight. And this weight will give you the stability of the whale bore. It doesn't collapse. Mm -hmm. Certain mud weight to keep the uh, whale which it was bore, which it was drilled, you need something to hold it from inside. Yes. Otherwise it will start collapsing. Yes. So I wanted a smart tester. Luckily, they said, okay, we'll send you for a test mascot. Okay? Because I don't have any certificate. And, and at that time, you were just observing how people do it? Yes. You observe. learned how, how, yes. how to do it? I observe what they are doing. Sometimes I used to take the food to the rig. And from that moment, I used to go and learn. And there were around three Omani smart testers. And I said, okay, show me. And those people in the catering, some of them 10 years, some seven years. And I said, I'm not going to spend my life on doing this. I need, because my family is growing, getting bigger. My family getting bigger, expense will get bigger. Yes. Okay, so I have to think in future. Yes. And now is the opportunity. I'm young now, not married, nothing. This is the right time to correct on studying. So, alhamdulillah, tawfiq min Allah. I went for the exam to Muscat. I sat with that English chief petroleum engineer who interviewed me. Half what he said, I didn't know it, but I was smiling. Yes. So when I didn't know it, I smiled. So he smiled back. So I was very optimistic. He said, okay, sunshine, you passed. I said, what? He said, passed. I was. I can't tell you how much the happiness You're I very had. happy. Very, very happy. Real happy. I came back. They said, okay, on next Saturday you can start work. He gave message. So this came boss of the catering. He said, so you're resigning? I said, no. Give me two weeks of my leave. At least I work. Treat me as your employee, but I don't want salary. But don't sack me. Because... I'm not resigning. So, so the catering is a different organization? Yes. The, different. And, and, and this yes. one is a different organization? Yes. That's okay. video, the main company, oil company, the yes. existing one. Yes. So I said, 
I don't want to resign, but I will resign. After two weeks, once I'm confirmed, or I get probationary period over, I'm confirmed as a PDO employee, then at that time, then you can cut any days. But if I fail, if I, the, I, do not, I do not fulfill the requirement, instead of going home, you can keep me on my same job. That guy was friendly with me and he agreed at this condition. So it was, it was a good uh, deal, yes. I think. Okay. Uh, you are playing it safe. Yes, to make sure that I don't go after two weeks with no job. Yes. So anyway, alhamdulillah, it was confirmed after one month. Instead, three months come. It's called probationary period. So they accepted me after one month. I got the confirmation letter. And I did very well, alhamdulillah, luckily. And I did that job altogether for four years. Okay? Mashallah. Then Abdullah Lamki, by June that year, he came. He joined the he organization. Joined Abdullah Lamki. Yes. So he said, Sanchan, I see you are interested to work here. You are a hard worker. I say, I don't know. I can't measure myself. You see me, so you assess me better. So he said, why don't you study? I said, how to study here? He said, what about, I buy you ICS course, International Correspondence School from UK. Yes. I said, fine, thank you. Then I will accumulate the money and give it to you once. How much it will cost? He said it will cost you 34 riyal. Okay, at that time, again, I'm in PDO instead of 11 riyal, now my salary 27 riyal. MashaAllah. So you, you, you went up the ladder? Yes. Now Matista, 27 riyal. So he bought me a course for 34 riyal. I took three subjects to study. Mathematics, English, chemistry. I tried to buy it on chemistry, I could not. It was too hard for me. So I carried on with the English and mathematics. I did that for the first one year. Th this was while you were working in the yes, desert? So he bought you the books? Yes. He bought me, uh, he registered me in UK, ICS, International Correspondence School, and he teach me the past and the present, okay, doing, done, and all these kind of things. The okay. grammar? The grammar. Yes. And also mathematics. Chemistry, I could not handle it. So I left it, and then after four years, Abdullah left, I asked for transfer to production department. They jump on me, my supervisor. Why do you want to go there? We will have anything for you. I said, yes. I know you when you were assistant driller. Now you became driller, then tool pusher. And I'm remaining at this job. As much as your family is expanding, my family is also expanding. This is before me even marrying. Yes. Okay? So I need to work. I need to work in, I need to find a way of earning more money. Higher position, I'm, I'm ready to do for the challenge of getting more responsibility. So they said, okay. So they said, we'll give you, we'll raise you to a foreman within the rig. Yes. I said, okay, fine. So I became foreman and I got now the salary around 60, 70. Real. Real. Mm. Okay. Then they said, okay, we'll send you to ITC, International Introduction to Technical School. Where so is that? Min Al Fahal. Min Al Fahal. Okay. So I went to uh, I, uh, PTC. They said, ITC, you don't need. This is in Fahul. You are higher than ITC. So you can go straight away. PTC, Parliamentary Technical Course. So I did that with examination from UK. So I got 83 average marks, so I passed. And then uh, they said, okay, now we need you to go to UK. I said, I can't go to UK because I've got a big family and nobody there, a man, to look after my family at home. He said, your uncles and everything. Anyway, they gave me one month to think about. Everybody, I tell them I got opportunity. I said, I don't want to go. They said, you are crazy. People fighting to get it. And you got it, you don't want you it. Were, you were worried about your family worried, because yes. nobody is going to be there. 
then the, all my colleagues like Saif al Hinayi, Mawr al Asmi, and Amr Sulaimani, okay? They said, no, you come. We don't leave you. You'll come with us. So how, how old were you at that time? 17 at that time. 17. Because this is 76. Ah, 76, okay. Yes, okay. I joined 68, catering, two years. 70, February 70, I joined PDU. 76, I did the courses in Muscat. And I qualified. I got an average of 83 marks. Then they encouraged me to go UK. I went UK. I did mechanical engineering till 79. And then... So you stayed for two years? Yes. Diploma. And then I went to Holland, specialized course for one year there, P130. And then qualified. And then they sent me back. Came back to Oman. I became senior staff. Uh, first of December 1979. Now, now uh, when you came back uh, uh, from uh, from from the Holland. Uh, from Holland, okay. uh, what was the position that you you had you were holding at that time? I was time? foreman, and then first of December, I became driller, assistant driller. Assistant driller. Then I was giving 400 questions to uh, answer and to get examined on them. Yes. In simulator. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I did that after four years, 1983, October, I passed. I was the first Oman driller. And uh, this is where we come to that one. Yes. To this one. Yes. Okay. First the Oman recognition. 1983. 1983. October. October 1983. Yes. You were the first Omani, Omani driller. driller. And I think even in the, in the whole Middle East. Now, uh, I, at least our audience, uh, now they understand uh, the story, the struggle you went through to achieve this great achievement. I think uh, you had a total number of uh, years in service, 50 years. 50 years, yes. 50 Absolutely. years, 50 yes. years of service, yes. which is a remarkable, uh, you know, achievement. And I understand you went through a lot of challenges, difficulties, gradually moving up the ladder. Yes. Uh, you, you witnessed the changes in the country as well because when you started working, uh, Sultan Saeed bin Taymur was uh, leading the country mm -hmm. and then later on uh, Sultan Qaboos yes. was uh, leading, may Allah have mercy on his soul, Amen. was leading. So you, you saw the development and the change. I saw the development on all sides on infrastructure, on roads, hospital, schools, and everything, and on human being itself. Yes. And on technical issue and uh, non-technical. And, and here also there is uh, an interesting... Uh, Accommodation also. Uh, an, interest, an interesting image of you, yes. the young you. Yeah, uh, at that time, uh, I think there was a, a, a special story. Tell us about this, this, this article that was specially written about you. Tell us about it, uh, you know, why, why did they write this article? That story, because even when, when they heard I was the first Oman driller, yes. people were in the morning meeting in video, they said, how come Muhammad is, uh, or Sunshine is a driller? We believe Oman, they become director, but not in drilling rig. Yes. Drilling rig, is, driller is the highest, the toughest job. Yes. Tough, not high. The highest job is the drilling supervisor, okay? Mm. But it's a tough job. So they believe Oman is, they can study up to a doctorate and they become manager or director, no problem. But to do a hard job physically, manually, yes. and physically all, it's not easy. So they never expected. Some people didn't know me who are in the office. They said, can we see the, the telex? Those days by telex. From Holland it came, so I remember Seif Shoeli was asked to bring the telex. They brought it in the conference, in the morning conference. They said, here. Yeah. They said, this is a miracle. Very surprising. SubhanAllah. And Alhamdulillah, and I said, don't worry. This is nothing. This is only a starting point. I promise you I'll go five steps higher, inshallah, or maybe six. And really, uh, I went five steps higher. I went up to drilling manager. 
ما شاء الله I was uh, 83 as a drilling 88 I was tool pusher or in charge of the rig and uh, 98 I was senior well engineer myself and more of the asmi yes we are looking after few rigs and then uh, 90, this is 98 and 2006 I was rig manager looking after few rigs and troubleshooter in the field Uh, now, uh, Engineer Muhammad, yes. if we want to summarize the 50 years yes. of service, what are the three main learnings that you, uh, you would like to share with our audience about the 50 years that you had? What I want to share with them, I said never give up, uh, be patient and struggle, and try to work hard, and try to be loyal to your country and to your country and your uh, people and be faithful for this country and this country deserve we give this country as much as we can from our health and knowledge and we serve this country even if we assume free <coughs> of course everybody who cannot do work free but also i request the government and the high position people, I mean, in the management of the companies to look after this Omani. Because the Omanis, they had enough of traveling abroad. It's about a time now to settle and to get a job, decent job in the country. And Omani, if you handle them well, they can do anything. Nothing is impossible. And this is a proven. I'm without any ed education, never been in a school, and never sat in a school. I don't know even how to sit in a in a chair school because I never had that opportunity. Not I didn't want, I never had that opportunity. So I jumped to, to the jobs from shortcut. I did a lot of shortcut and Alhamdulillah, I chosen the most difficult part because to be in a drilling industry, it's not an easy job. Yes. It's not easy task. It's different than from music or any other jobs. This is a real hard job and you have to be safe, conscious and safe. If you could have 10 eyes, you need 10 eyes because you are surrounded by the, the danger. Yes. All surrounding you, all dangerous. If you miss a little bit, you are gone. Your life is gone and somebody else's life may be gone. All I request, all the people with a big company and with a big outfit in this country and, who, and uh, the Ministry of Labor, to look into the Omanis really and not to listen to the other way they said Omanis can't do the job. That's not true. If they can't do the job, not because the individual can't do the job. They are not supervised well. Yes. They need to be supervised well, look after them, look for them and look after them and be kind to them. I mean, in such way, give them their right and you as a supervisor, fight for their rights. When I was in catering, after I left, they try to bring some, you see, this is a shame to tell you that one message I want to convey now opportunity for me. Yes. 1968, the organization in the company are better than today. If I tell you, you will say not possible. Yes, it is possible. How, how is that? How is that? I will explain. In 1968, you cannot bring expatriate unless for very important job either chief electrician or chief mechanic, okay? Otherwise, below that, during Saeed bin Timur, you are not allowed to bring anybody below that level. You have to be either chief electrician or chief, or chief mechanic. This is on the rig. I am one, and I was doing the lowest job as a serving meal or washing dishes. And I overcome all that level, all I jumped on, and I become leader of all that operation. 100 people, and I was leading them. From the bottom, lowest person with no education until I was leading that job. But because I was given the opportunity, when I aim for something, I get supported and I got the job. Not because it's worse, there is no, I didn't have cousin, I didn't have uncle, I didn't have anybody. All to me, they're all expatriate and, but, I try, if, if expatriate is tough, he doesn't want to give, I, I become more, more political to him in order 
to achieve what I want from him. What to I learn. Want, I need to learn from him. Yes. I don't care what nationality, what language, what religion, anything. I care that I want to learn as much as possible. My aim to learn as much as possible and to study and to serve this country. Because even if there is a rule comes, they say, okay, you work for free, we'll work. Yes. And we chosen the difficult part. But Omani, they need to be given. Now I feel sorry. When I hear Omani, they need to be given to sign contract for two years. If you don't fit after two years, you get sacked. That means we don't trust the Omanis. We don't have faith on them, they will be successful. And it's proven. Pedio now, when I said 1968, Omanization was better. As I mentioned, all the drivers are Omani. All any small jobs are Omani. Washing dishes are Omani. Now go any of those rigs, you will not find Omani. Either cook or uh, kitchen boy or, or even some driver now. The, and I can understand if the companies, they want expatriate because the expatriate will give him 70 riyal. And Oman, because we live in Oman, I have to grow my family in Oman. Since I'm in Oman, they know the cost of living of the country. Yes. Can I afford with 70 riyal? You know, it's not it's possible. Difficult. It's difficult. Very difficult. It's impossible. So we can't relate the job to where you live. If you're Oman, you will live here. The expatriate, even 70 real, maybe he come from a place where they give 20 real. So he managed with 70 real, he said, it's great. But our cost of living in the country is much higher, much higher. Yes. People with 400 real, they have got loan and they can't, they can't repay their loan. Yes, when I look at myself, 11 real. But those days, 11 real, I didn't think of TV. I don't need TV. I don't need electricity. Because nobody has electricity. But now you tell somebody, don't use electricity. It's not possible. They will die because yeah. the house is of cement. Those days, the house is uh, of hut, made of leaves of trees. Yes. So we have to think really careful. This matter of giving them contract two years, I think it demoralized them. Because it tells them that maybe after two years, you lose your job. If yeah. you think because they don't work well, no, so provide them well. I used to look at the job. If my brother, I need to give him warning letter, I gave them. Few of my brother, I even gave them. Yes. But I made sure they, they go higher up. They work and they get them. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you very much Thank again, you. Engineer Mohammed Al, Al Hinai, and hope to see you soon. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you very much for being in uh, Dome Podcast and see you next time, inshallah, from me, your host, Hatab Al Absalam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.